What's up, YouTube? So today I've planned something a little bit different for you guys. I'm doing a collaboration with another YouTuber called Artifact. Not this Artifact and not that one either, this one. I'm gonna post links to his YouTube in the description. Basically, the concept of our collaboration is I make presets and send them to him, which he contextualizes into a track. And he makes presets and sends them to me, which I contextualize into a track. The trick is that he makes drum and bass tutorials and I make Cytrons tutorials. So he's made some presets for me to turn into a Cytrons track and I made some presets for him to turn into a drum and bass track. So also check out the continuation of this on his channel where he uses my presets to create a drum and bass track. I think this is pretty interesting because it allows people who might be jumping into a genre for the first time to be able to understand the key differences that kind of make up what, you know, for example, what would be different in a Cytron's kick to a regular kick or a Cytron's bass to a regular bass. That's why I think this is a pretty interesting thing to do. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm going to hopefully be making more of these. So if you are a YouTuber who makes music production stuff, preferably outside of the genre that I usually do, it would be cool to kind of work on this kind of collaboration where I try make stuff for you and you try make stuff for me. I'm gonna learn a lot from seeing how Artifact turns my sounds into a drone bass track. And I think that'll help me learn how uh, to contextualize my sounds in the drone bass genre a little bit better. So anyway, if you are another YouTuber and you're interested in doing something like this, let me know. Anyway, enough blabbering. Let's dive into Pimp My Preset, episode one. Let's dive in and have a look. So like I said, Artifact has prepared a couple of sounds for me to start a project. So I see he's created a couple of loops, so with a kick and that kind of thing, as well as a couple of vital presets, which we can look at, you know, what might be, uh, what we might do differently to contextualize it into something a little bit more Cytrancy. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you what this sounds like before we actually dive in. So these are all just the raw samples that he sent me. So let's talk about a couple of things which I would look at doing a little bit differently. I think a few of these things, um, for example, this ARP over here, this I think is something that confuses quite a few people when getting into Cytrons for the first time, especially if you haven't heard Cytrons on like a festival system. Often we assume that the kind of 16th grid sound, you know, that da 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 Often if we're coming into Cytrons for the first time from another genre, we assume that that is like a low ARP sound as opposed to the actual bass sound itself. So I can see here, he's kind of created this as like the ARP and there isn't really a main bass sound. And I think this is interesting because, you know, obviously with drum and bass, um, the main focus is on the bass and the drums and the sound design there is more focused on the bass. So the bass sounds in that genre are often very pronounced. However, when you're listening to Cytrons as an entire mix, um, I guess the bass isn't as pronounced in terms of its different sound design characteristics and all that kind of thing. So what I wanna do is I wanna maybe recreate this ARP a little bit into more of an actual ARP sound, maybe something a little bit more melodic. And I wanna create a traditional Cytrons bass for this track. What I also wanna do is I quickly wanna have a look at the kick. I'm also not too convinced by this kick. Maybe we can look at processing the kick to create something a little bit more Cytronsy. At this point, it's feeling like the kick is a little bit techno-y. So notice how the kick is very boomy. You know, often in Cytrons, we don't have such a boomy kick. We often try to accentuate the transient of the kick instead of the boom. So I just wanna make a quick example. However, we might end up wanting to actually change this uh, kick drum altogether. What we can do is we can add what's called the four stage. So this is a uh, multi-stage envelope that's built into Bitwig. And we can use this to craft more of a balance towards the transient of the kick. So notice how, I mean, if you analyze a lot of Cytrons, if you look at it at an actual scope, you'll see that the kick drum is not like a round shape like this. There's often a dip over here. And you'll see this is where the loudest point is. And that's like the boomy frequency. We don't necessarily want that. So we're gonna modulate the volume 
using this multi-stage envelope to remove that boom and accentuate the transient. So notice how we've kind of like shaved the kick into more of this kind of like shape. It will look, looks, it looks almost more like a fish. So that's more what we want for the Cytrons kick. What we could do is we could also create another modulator here. Um, let's use the four stage again. And we can just create a very tight envelope here in the beginning and use this as the pitch modulation because I feel like it does need a little bit more of that transient. In this situation where we can't quite get it to what we want with the transient, sometimes it's a better idea to actually replace the sample completely. Um, Bitwig has a really cool thing built in called Replacer. Check this out. So again, it's one of these uh, containers. How it works is you put that on and it's got a generator built in here. So in here, we add a sampler and now we drag whatever sample we want in here from our library. So I'm going to use the Camphor Audio Cytrons Kicks. There's a free pack of these, by the way, available online. That sounds nice. So listen to the sound of the transient of this kick. It's very snappy compared to the more boomy techno kick. Uh, with, we also, with Replacer, we also want to make sure that this is on 100%. But obviously because, I mean, it's a Cytrons track, the kick is always on 4-4, we could just add it in as MIDI and remove that kick. I just wanted to show you guys that replacer thing. So I want to show you a very quick rundown of how I would generally make a Cytrons bass in Vital. Let's just turn these grid lines down so that I can quickly just make an upward ramp like this. And then let's set the phase to zero because what we want is we want the phase to re-trigger at the beginning of the cycle. Um, and you can also just set it to 360. But depending on the sound, sometimes you might want to offset it ever so slightly so that you hear the transient because of the attack envelopes and stuff. Sometimes you might not want that, but we're going to adjust that later. So anyway, attack envelope, we want to turn down to zero because we want that very first pluck of the sound. And we can actually turn this oscillator down two octaves um, because generally speaking, we'll be, we'll be around that range anyway. So here, what I'm gonna do is gonna put on an analog filter. Let's turn the filter down all the way. And then let's just add an envelope over here and let's set the decay setting something like this. And we might wanna just turn that down, but we're gonna turn, we're gonna adjust these to taste in a moment. Let's see what the sounds like when we trigger some notes in here. So can you hear how the bass has this instability? We're gonna to wanna to jump over to Vital and we wanna make sure that this phase retrigger is on zero. It's all in that filter envelope. That's the Cytron's bass essentially, all in that filter envelope. No processing, just a nice clean saw. And it's all in that envelope shape of the filter. So here there's sometimes a couple of issues that you might run into with the Cytron's bass. So some easy ways to remedy those issues would be to turn the note length down a little bit. And what happens then is it gives the note enough time to actually hit the release cycle before the next note. And then sometimes what I like to do is let's just turn the sustain down a little bit just to accentuate the transient of the sound a little bit more. So here I'm using a macro so that we can control the amount of filter over here. I just find it's easy way to fine tune that parameter. Maybe. 
So do you see how this part over here, because the bass and the kick are overlapping over here, there's this kind of boost of the volume. So this part actually gets to a little bit higher than the peak of the kick drum itself. So this is why it's important to use something like uh, side chaining, like an LFO tool or something like that. And then we want these notes to still be quite full. And we want these notes to still be quite full. Can you see how that blend is so much nicer now? So I think with this one, I want to try get it a little bit more melodic. What we can do is we can use something like uh, an arpeggiator, or we can use something like Riffer to actually generate us uh, some MIDI patterns. Uh, if we press any device, it should allow us to nest Riffer in here. And it should be able to send that. Okay, perfect. So now it sends Riffer to Vital, all nested in a single MIDI channel. So nice. Um, so here, let's set it to the key that I figured out, which was G sharp. And I'm just going to use the kind of Phrygian minus a few notes scale that I've customized here. And let's just mess with some of these parameters. Let's make it a little bit longer, something like 32. <laughs> Okay, hey, that's sounding great. That's sounding fantastic. I actually like this. I like where this is going. So here, there's actually some of these modulations, for example, like this one, that are kind of continuous. Now, because that we're uh, triggering it outside of the plugin um, using something like Riffer, we're actually going to have to set this to sync rather than trigger because it's resetting the cycle every time it receives a note. <laughs> So with this one, I think we need more of a sweeping kind of uh, filter type effect. So I'm going to remove one of these macros. Let's call this filter. And let's add a filter here. OK, so it looks like he's already used this filter. And so how would we add an extra filter <coughs> if we don't necessarily have one in the patch or, or we've used up all of the filters? There are several ways. We could potentially open up an EQ and kind of craft our own filter in the EQ by just doing something like this. And now we just modulate this, and now we've got a low-pass filter. Typically, with these kinds of things, I want them before the delay and the reverbs. Okay, so the next preset that we have is a riser. This one sounds cool. It's like almost cinematic. I like it.
Ooh, I like this one a lot. I like it a lot. It kind of has a bit of a drum and bassy sound to it. So what I want to do is I actually want to sign another macro to slow down this modulation so that we can create both the rises and downlifters with this one effect. Okay, so he's created like a hi-hat pattern generator here. So I guess that means we can remove these hi-hats here and we can create our own hi-hats here by just holding a note. So this is cool because I actually did want to change the hi-hats a little bit. I found like that rhythm was a little bit regimented. What we can do is we can kind of add a little bit of randomization in here. So let's just open the patch. What we can do is we can actually set up a random to modulate this loosen parameter here. And then let's set this to sample and hold. Let's sync it and then let's set it to 1 over 16th. And we can also set up a parameter to modulate the panning of the oscillator. Okay, yeah, that's cool. We're starting to inject some life into these hi-hats. Awesome, that is about all that we have time for for today. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Big thanks to Artifact for sending me these samples and presets for making this video. Don't forget to check out the video on his channel. I'm gonna be posting links in the description to where you can find that. Anyway, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I will see you guys next time. Cheers.